Hello, welcome to my channel, and today we are making waterfalls. This is my idea book. It is not necessarily a pretty book because I started it at this size, which is a six by six, and then I decided I wanted it bigger because I have bigger pieces to put in here. And today we're taking a look at the waterfall. So I have one waterfall here, and this is made with washi, and that's a very simple waterfall. We'll make that one. But then I also have another waterfall, and this is a hinged waterfall. So we're going to take a look at how to make both of these types of waterfalls today. And I will, in the description box, put the timestamps so that if you already know how to make one and you just want to learn how to make the other one. Um, and the, the second one actually has uh, two ways of doing it. So we're going to take a look at a whole bunch of stuff. Lots and lots of ways to make waterfalls today. So the first thing I'm going to do is that first the first one with the washi. So I want to have a couple of strips. They have to all be the same width. This particular width is two and a half. And the first, the back one, the, the one in the back, this is a, not quite, the page that it's going on is this is in one of my uh, journals that I am trying to make only of scraps. And the paper this is coming from is paper that I have used in the past to cut circles out of. So this is scrap paper. My goal on this journal is to make completely a junk journal. It can only be from scraps or from found ephemera. So it's going on this page. So it's not quite eight and a half inches tall. So I'm going to go with a six inch back piece. So we're going to go with six inches and that makes this piece five inches. So I have a six inch and I have a five inch piece out of that piece, out of that. And that's a good section. I'm going to cut another two inch section here. Hang on, let me cut off my circles, get rid of those. And yes, I will use that to cut some smaller circles. I'm going to go with another two and a half. Come on. Two and a half, lining it up so it's nice and level. That leaves me with an extra strip, but I don't need that right now. What I think I'd like to do, I want to alternate, but I want to alternate. So I have, what do I have? I have six and I have five. So I'm going to go four. And three. And that leaves me with a, a little bit over two inches left on that piece because remember it was an odd size to start with. All right, so those are, you might say, oh, well, those are your pieces of your waterfall. Well, maybe, but I think I want to alternate so that I have some other colors in there as well. So let me quick grab, I have a sheet. Well, how big is this one? Is that wide enough? That's not wide enough. Let me grab another sheet of uh, paper. I'll be right back. Okay, I have another sheet of paper that I have cut to two and a half. And this time I want to do it at five and a half. And four and a half. Is this also two and a half? That might be a little short, but we'll try it. We're going to go to, uh, what did I say? Three and a half. Okay. Let's set that aside. And now we're going to put these inside. Oops, I have them backwards. I want that one, then this 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 one. So when I stack them, they look like this. I like that a lot. Now, I, there are options here. I can just staple it. 
that's one way to do this. I mean, when we talk about making uh, waterfalls, there are a ton of different ways of doing this. So I could just staple it. I would put two staples up at the top, maybe put a piece of washi over it to cover the staples and stick it in the journal. I want it to be a little bit more of a flippy flop and I don't want the staples in there. So I am going to use washi tape. And I have this very pretty butterfly and flower washi tape, which I'm going to use. Let me grab my glue book because I am going to want to glue these down. I'm going to take this. I'm going to, because remember, washi tape is designed to be lifted up and replaced. And the problem with that is I don't want this lifting up. This is going to be raised and lowered a lot. So I want to make sure that it is not going to move, that the tape's not going to come off. So I'm just going to tape these two together. Now really, I just needed to put it on the top one. I didn't need to put this one under here, because where the important place is to line it up is when I flip it over. I want to make sure everything's lined up, and then I want to take my washi tape, come on, and flip it up and over. Stop doing that. There we go. Flip it up, flip it over. Now I'm not quite level, so I do want to lift it because it was giving me trouble, so things shifted. I want that to be nice and level. There we go. Now we, things are cooperating. All right, I want to cut off my edges. Snip, snip, get rid of those. And then I want to come back inside here and I need to reinforce this part of the hinge. The washi tape becomes your hinge. Okay, so I just want to put that down and then fold it over, cut off my ends. And I'm ready to add the next layer. It still didn't quite come out right, but come on, off my fingers. All right. Let's see if I can shift that over, just fold it. When I folded it over, I just didn't fold it straight. Okay, adding the next layer. Now, it might be easier for you if you just simply take it to the side to add your washi. I'm going to put my washi, this is directional washi, so I want to make sure it's right side up. Not all washi has direction, but this particular one does. So I'm going to put it on there, and then I'm going to, oh, come on. Put it under here, and then I'm going to flip it over so that I can see it a little bit better. I'm going to flip my tape over. And cut off my pieces. The more you do this, the easier it becomes. Where's my? I have my washi thingy here that I have, so some of these pieces will fit onto my washi tape holder. Okay, remember you got to go back inside and reinforce this hinge. This really is an easy project. I put the tape right over the top of the other tape so that you can't, so it doesn't really show very much. And this time when you come, it down, come down to make your fold, make sure that you're lined up. That, just save yourself that step. And yes, it's easier if you cut your cut these every time you do them and then they get stuck to you. And that's why I have this tape or have this page so that I can get rid of that. All right, I'm gonna pause the video. I'm gonna add in the other pieces because it's really the same thing over and over and over again. You're just gonna add your washi and then you're going to line it up and then you're going to fold it over 
So let's add the washi. Line it up. Fold it over. And cut. And this is really all you do. Then you do the hinge on the inside. And this piece is done. Hang on. I'm going to go ahead and pause and I will be back and show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, I'm back putting on the last piece and I wanted to I wanted to stop and make a comment about the thickness. As you add more and more layers to your waterfall, you have to be aware of how thick it is going to become. Now, I didn't use a very thick washi here. Uh, you may wish to change to a different washi or to just simply use a thicker washi to start with if you're going to do a lot of layers. This one is, as you can see, oops, becoming quite thick. And I'm okay with that with this one. But what it means is that it's all the more important to put in your inside hinge because you see the gap that's happening there. That is typical because you have you're going further over with it. So you want to make sure that you are in fact covering up that inside gap with your hinge, reinforcing it because otherwise the only thing holding that on is a very thin piece of washi. And I'm going to cut that this way. Now I did get a little off on my pages. That's likely to happen the more pages you add. If you're only doing three or four sheets, it's actually pretty easy. I've got my washi thingy here. This will eventually, when it is full, become a um, here we go, become a journal card or a cover or something. It'll become something, a Mod Podge over the top of it so that it seals it. All right, and there's my waterfall. Now I've decided to put this one actually in my time journal. This is a journal that I am working on for, um, now, no, you know what? I think I'm going to stick with my original idea. Let's go ahead and put it on that blue, because I do like it on that blue. There we go. Now you can, of course, ink your edges. If you wanted to do that ahead of time, you could do that ahead of time. If you want to just do the edges now, you can just go down along the side. And as you can see, I got a little bit off but that's actually pretty easily fixed. Okay, and I'm only going to do that much of the outside of it. It's pretty easily fixed because I've got it lined up here now, and I'm going to take my scissors, and this spot that comes out, I'm just going to cut it down the side. Gone. Now that's all leveled up. It's a little bit off down here, uh, and I, there, you, there's no reason why you can't just do all of your cutting later. This piece I knew was going to be short because it was um, it was a shorter piece of paper. It was a, a leftover, because what am I trying to do here? I'm using up my leftovers. All right, moving all of that aside. Now, to attach this, you could do the same. You could do this with the washi. My concern with that is with all the lifting and whatnot, it's going to come off. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and use my Fabri-Tac all over the back of this. I also do not have particularly strong paper. This is not a heavy cardstock that I'm using. You can use whatever you have available. In fact, the next one we're doing will be a slightly heavier cardstock. Okay. Flipping it over, putting it down. 
Well, like I said, you can stamp on these, you can add stickers to them, you know, put something in the corner. But when you flip it up, look at all the places to write. Oops, I may have glued myself together there a little bit. So it's a good thing I'm lifting them up and checking. There. And then this is glued down, which is fine because now you have a writing service, whereas it was really hard to write on this. So this gives you extra writing surfaces on your journal pages very easily. So that's one type of waterfall. All right, let's reset and we're gonna do the hinged waterfall. Okay, I have reset. This one now is going to be the hinged waterfall. And this works better with a slightly heavier cardstock. This is a regular typical cardstock. This particular page is a heavier cardstock. It's not as heavy as the two that look like wood. But we're, this is the one that we're going to work on next. Because this one is going into my time journal, this is not the cover for it. This is simply the signature for it. Um, because this is going into here, and I apologize if you hear any beeping or backing up. We live across the street from the park. And it's May 1st when I am filming this. So on May 1st, one of the things that they do across the street is, first of all, they mow. So you may hear the mower. And then second of all, they bring in all the picnic tables. So he backs up and you've got a lot of noise with them bringing in the picnic tables. So if you hear some beeping and whatnot, that's all that's going on over there. All right. So for this one, I want to put it on, I think, this page. And, yep, I like that together. So I want this waterfall to be four inches wide. So this one's going to be a wider waterfall. So I'm going to cut, first of all, I'm going to cut this entire 12 by 12 sheet of paper into four inch strips. And we'll start with that there. So now I have my four inch strips. Because it's going on a full-size page, I want the back piece, let me find my page again, I want my back piece here to be, oh, what, let's see what that would be, come out to be. Yeah, I think I want to stick with seven inches. So this one's going to be seven inches. which gives me a five inch, which is perfect because I'm gonna do wider pieces here. So I've got a five inch and I have a seven inch. So I want a three inch with this one. Three inches, yes. Sorry, just double checking my math. So I have a, a seven inch, a five inch and a three inch. Now I want a six inch and a four inch, and I'm going to use the same paper because it doesn't have anything on the back. And I think it's going to be neat when you flip it up to see the two pieces. So this one is going to be five inches. And then I need a four inch. Did that by any chance come out to, no, I need a, I did that wrong. I need the four inch which I have. So there's my four inch and I need a six inch. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna go with six inches. And then now these are two leftover papers that I can use for something at some other point. I want it to go in like that. And I really should have added a little bit for my hinge, but that's all right. We're going to, we'll go with this. Now I want, I'm going to use my scoreboard for this. You don't have to, you can do it however you want, but I'm going to score each of these. I want to score the hinges at, I can't see, Problem. the only thing I problem I have with this scoreboard is that the inches are up here and the centimeters are down here and I'm an inch person. So I'm constantly working way up at the top. And I wanna put these here 
and then I want to score them at a half an inch. Now I'm sure that did not go through all of them. That's fine. So we're going to quickly score them all at a half an inch. Actually, it didn't do badly going back, going through all of through these. And it really did kind of hit all of them. There we go. Okay, we are scored at a half an inch. Now we will put this away. Because that part is done. And what I want is my page. And because I've not yet sewn in my signature, I'm going to take my page right out. I'm going to fold my hinge back. And there's this is where there's a couple different ways to do this. I'm going to fold my hinge back and I'm going to... Oops, I lost... Did I do that backwards? Where's my white page? Okay, the top one is this way. So that's the top. And this comes next. Come on. It's, it's growing quite nicely. I just folded this one backwards, that's all. I want that one to go this way. And then, there we go. All right. If I did these with different patterns, it would be easier. So now what I've done is I've hinged them all, and I have nested them. They're all nested in there together. What I like about this is that now when I flip it, you know, they're all going to be, oops. Why is that one different? Oh, but that makes sense. Because you put the two faces to side to side, like that. Okay. All right. See? All right. I got it. Okay. So, now, what I want to do is glue all my hinges together. But, I want to do this one at a time. So I'm going to put a strip of glue here. If I can get my glue to come out. And I'm going to glue this hinge to this hinge. I'm going to make sure that things are lined up. Okay, nice and lined up. Then I'm going to glue this hinge I'm sure you're already beginning to see how this is going to work to this hinge. I'm sure I'm lined up. I'm a little bit off. So what I like about working with Fabri-Tac is that it's movable for a few minutes. You can use whatever glue you like. I like the Fabri-Tac because if I don't get it completely lined up, I can do something with it. Yep, they're making noises over in the park, putting out the picnic benches for the summer. Okay, and when you fold it, you're going to start to notice that you've got extra lines here. That's fine. That's what's supposed to happen. Okay. And then I'm going to add my last piece, which is right here. Now, I don't like doing this with too many more pages than this because... Um, it gets really bulky. It can get very bulky. And you know what? To the point where I'm not sure that this is really where I want this. I just put 
that in upside down. Yep, I put that in upside down. Okay, come over here, get in the light. Nope. Just double checking before I put this in. I have obviously have been starting to work on this. Uh, I kind of like that better. Nope, oh, this is the one. There we go. I'm going to pull that out because it's going to be easier to work with. And the reason I'm choosing this one is because when you put this one in, you are only attaching the hinge to the page. Only the hinge goes down. Now, make sure, again, if you're using art glitter glue, you're going to be putting it in and it's not ever going to move again. If you're using um, the Fabri-Tac, you can kind of move it around and make sure that you're level. But you have to let it sit for a bit. Because now you're going to be able to hinge these up very easily and you have writing space on all of these sides but you also have writing space here on the back so you have writing space everywhere now what you might want to do to cover that up make it look a little pretty I'm going to grab that same washi that I was using and my glue book sorry for the reach in front of the camera like that I can't get some. There it goes. And this time I'm going to cut it rather than rip it because I want it to have nice clean sides. There we go. Oh, maybe. And then I can just put a little bit of washi here to cover that up. It goes on my page. So now when I put it in the journal, Then, there we go. And I come to my page. That's what it looks like. Now, you, obviously, you can decorate these. You can do all sorts of things with these. Now, there is a third way that you can do the hinged journal. This hinge, and, and you have to be careful with this. One, two, three, four, five pages is probably about as much as I would go with it because it does bulk up you are going to end up with a bulky spot in your journal. If, if you're concerned about getting too much bulk, that it, that's a problem. So let me show you another way that you can do this same kind of waterfall, but without the bulk. All right, be right back. Need to get another sheet of paper. Okay, so for this one, I'm back to using, putting this one is gonna go into my idea journal. Um, this one also, this one is easy because, is nice because you can have all the same size pieces of paper. If you don't have long strips and, and you don't want to deal with trying to, you know, get them so that they're different lengths like that, this will work nicely for having all the same size. I have three pictures here. These pictures are available on my coffee shop. If you want to find uh, some images to use, these are out of a yearbook from Albany from early 1900s, very early 1900s. And I'm just going to fold back the top of the picture. When I, I cut these out, I was going to use them for something else, and I'm going to use them for this now instead. And this time I'm not going to use my scoreboard because you don't need the scoreboard. You really can do these hinges with just folding them over. And if you want to use a bone folder or if you want to just use your store card, 
that works too. Now I have three pieces all hinged and I'm going to put these lovely ladies here as a waterfall. For this I'm going to simply need my glue. This again is going into my idea journal because I don't have this particular waterfall in here this way and I'm going to simply glue the hinge and since she's my first one down and I can what's nice is I'm doing this on music paper so I can line it up very easily and make sure that it's straight. This was a part I've got a hymnal that I well in fact the hymnal that I'm using for my cover is a hymnal that I took apart. Okay, I didn't quite get these lined up when I cut them. They're not exactly the same width. That's okay, it's going into my idea journal rather than into anything that's just not being sold. These images are for free, by the way, and they will continue to be free until, I think it's 200 or 500, I can't remember, are, are sold. And then once they're gone, are sold, uh, they're free. And then, but once that's gone, then I, I will be raising the price on them so and there will be a charge for them so you might want to make sure you get those quickly so now we have this quick and easy hinge one two three it's a variation on the other one it's but it's easy so i guess you know of the three uh i don't where did i put it I don't remember where I put the, the okay there's this one um there's this one and here's this one oh no where, where did I put that hang on a second sorry senior moment couldn't remember which journal I've got this is the problem with having too many journals out here. I have two signatures for this particular journal. I have the signature for my time journal, and then I have my idea book out here. I don't know where anything is anymore. Okay, so we have the washi tape waterfall. We have the hinged waterfall where they're all hinged together and it makes it like a pad and then we have the separate hinges that make it completely different give it this one probably lies the flattest of all of them um, if you're again if you're concerned about bulk this works all right so on this hinged day of three hinges I will find the other one. I know it's in here somewhere. There it is. There. Three hinges. Three different ways. Of, probably not even all in, in camera here. Three different ways of making waterfalls. If you are enjoying these videos, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit like to let YouTube know that you like them. Click the bell if you want a notifications for when the next video comes out. In the meantime... This is Cindy, signing off.